So I think pretty much everyone knows that Mike Evans is great, but I do feel like there are a little bit of misconceptions as to what makes him so great. And so I figured, let me make a video about it and really break those things down. Um, one of those misconceptions that I have heard is that some people say that he's kind of more of a product of Jameis Winston to some degree, just in the sense that Winston always throws the ball down the field. Uh, and, you know, if he throws an interception, well, no one blames the receiver for an interception, despite the fact that sometimes it is partially their fault. And with all the pick sixes, you know, they get more offensive snaps. So there is some logic there. However, I think there's just as much reason to say that Evans could have even more numbers simply because of how many times Winston has missed him over the years. Again, if we want to talk about false narratives, one of the false narratives that I think you can mention is the idea that Winston is this incredible thrower of the football that is just very stupid. Stupid. That's not the case. He's not very stupid, and also he will just whiff on some throws. Like this play, for example, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one matchup on the top of the screen, and Evans is running deep, and these are kind of the routes that Winston is the worst at, really the deep sideline routes, which is unfortunate because Evans is probably the best at these kind of routes. This one's not necessarily one of Evans' best routes. He pretty much just runs straight up, uh, but you know what? Listen, I mean, he's 6'5 and can run incredibly quickly, so the fact that, you know, he can just do that, it's pretty much good enough, and there is definitely a window where you can make this throw. It's nothing crazy huge, but there's a fine window here. You at the very least would expect Evans to get a shot to try and get, catch this ball, but instead Winston's throw was just wild and to the point where it almost looks like maybe they just weren't on the same page but I'm telling you you would see this sometimes where a ball would just get completely away from Winston so it's possible he just thought Evans was running a different route than he actually was that is definitely possible but again I'm I'm showing this one play to show an example of there was a few of these where the ball was just nowhere close to Evans especially on those deep balls again misconception about Winston he's much better at you know those 20 the 25 yard throws than the the 40 yard ones down the field and especially when they're over the middle the sidelines is where he struggles a little bit more uh, and that's an example of it that being said Evans is great at those deep balls and you know he's great at running deep routes and I think he's very deceptively fast I, I don't know what it is exactly about him but people don't really realize how quick he is especially when it comes to straight line speed he's just so fast and this is an example where it's going to be a cover three zone and it's play action. So basically, there's several things that can work here. Um, you know, play action gets the linebackers to move in. Uh, you have a tight end running over in the middle that could potentially get the safety who's in the middle of the field to move in. And if he does that, Evans, who is running deep, he could potentially go deep. Uh, you also have Godwin on the other side. He is going running deep. However, Godwin's route is a little bit different as he's going to cut up to the top of the screen uh, pretty much right after he gets off what is off screen here. So... Uh, that's the way this play is going to work. And just watch Evans, who again, he's lined up on the bottom of the screen. And watch how first he runs. And so there's a New York player who is defending him. But it's just going to be that guy now. So, you know, this is kind of a good situation. The play really works out. Uh, the New York player who is a little bit further up, uh, is he's moving further in to try to take away a route underneath. Which does leave Evans potentially open. Of course, the downside is the corner who is covering him is a few yards further deep. Although, you know, the plus side is that Evans could potentially run closer to the middle of the field uh, and get more open that way. Although, again, there's another New York player who is deep further up in that direction, so we can't go too far up. So you would think that he's going to run, you know, significantly further to the middle of the field. However, he's not going to do that. He moves a little bit up, but he mostly just runs by him and is able to use his speed to pick up a huge gain on that one. It really is. I mean, he's one of the more fast players in the NFL, and I feel like he doesn't get a lot of credit for that, and I have to assume it's because he's 6'5", and so everyone thinks, okay, he's just a, a jump ball type guy. Usually that's what you think. Usually those big guys aren't as fast, but he's fast, and he can definitely outrun you if you're not careful. And I really do feel like that's probably his best attribute, actually, is his speed. Whatever else he does is often set up by his speed, and this plays an example where it's going to be a, a cover one play, and so, you know, in a cover one man coverage play, you do have to be careful of a go route towards the sideline, especially when Mike Evans is uh, the guy who you're going up against. But on this play, I mean, as you see, Evans is not running a go route. He's going to run over the middle, which is great because watch, right when the ball is snapped, you notice that his assigned man, 
he has already turned, and he's trying to basically, you know, they say you want to use the sideline as an extra defender, where if you turn this way, this now means that for Mike Evans, uh, basically, it kind of forces him, if he is running a go route, closer to the sideline, so therefore, it's more difficult to make the catch, because he has to not only worry about making the catch, but also staying in bounds. However, that completely backfires, because Evans, as we know, was cutting towards the middle, and, you know, you're just not in position to make a play on it if you're turning in the wrong direction already, and Evans is able to easily get open, and again, you know, that's set up because he is so good at go routes. In fairness, it also was, I mean, you see Evans go for a timeout there. It was later in the half, but there was, there was still plenty of time left and they had timeouts. So I really don't think that that, you know, maybe a little bit of an added factor as to why he was so afraid of a go route. Uh, but as a whole, I think that a lot of that was just uh, because Evans is so good at go routes. There's also one thing that as a defensive coordinator, if I was going up against Tampa Bay, I would tell my corners uh, this uh, straight up. If it, there's a single safety deep or no safeties deep, do not play press coverage against Mike Evans. It's not going to work. And this plays an example. Uh, this was in a huge part in this game. This wasn't just any part of the game. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers were down uh, one point at this point. There was 38 seconds left, and they had just one timeout left. So, you know, at midfield, I mean, this is kind of a dangerous situation. You Maybe a lot of guys would probably be trying to get, you know, 10, 15 yards and just hope they can make a long field goal, but not Tampa Bay. They want to go for a lot. Again, I, I'm assuming that uh, the Giants thought they were going to just try and go over the middle and pick up 15 yards, which is why they're running a, a cover one robber play. I would have a second safety deep personally, but I remember when I was watching this, I am a Buccaneers fan, uh, and when I was watching this and I saw Evans uh, on the bottom of the screen and who's lined up with there being his assigned man playing press against him, I was like, this could be very good. There was no way of knowing if it was cover two or cover one, but I remember that you know, I figured Winston would throw it to him if it was uh, cover one, and the second he threw it in that direction, I was already excited because I knew Evans was going to find a way to get open and watch how open he gets. I mean, this isn't even close. He's several yards open. The only reason that wasn't a touchdown was because Winston didn't hit him in stride. If he hits him in stride, that's a touchdown, and they win this football game. Instead, Matt Gay missed the chip shot field goal, ca causing them to lose. But uh, without a doubt, I mean, that's just kind of what he can do, and it's really difficult to defend against. I mean, you can double-team him, but of course there's Chris Godwin and plenty of other weapons you have to worry about. Not to mention, even if you do finally play good defense against him, there's still plenty of things he can do, like this play. It's going to be a, a cover three zone, and so, you know, while it is... Uh, the defensive back is playing pretty close. It's a little bit different because he can sort of, he doesn't have to worry about, you know, jamming Evans at the line or anything. But after the ball is snapped, Evans is going to go around. And again, there's some uh, potential separation, nothing crazy. This is kind of similar to that first play I showed you. Also, you notice the safety, he's getting ready to move in and try and close in on this ball. So for Winston, it's not like he can just lob one up in the end zone. He kind of has to get it there in a hurry. So while Evans probably would get much more open the longer this play goes on, they don't have the time to do that because there's a safety who is trying to take away Evans' route. Winston's going to just fire this one there anyways, which kind of shows the confidence he has in Evans. But watch how Evans is able to go up and make this catch. He's able to adjust his body weight and go up and get it. And again, that's kind of another crazy thing about him is, you know, you think 6'5", okay, just tall guy who can just, you know, maybe he can jump up and catch it, but mostly just a guy who's tall, but not really. I mean, he's a guy who's tall, but he can totally go up and get it and he can move very well, which is just what makes him such a unique player. There's one last thing I have to talk about when talking about Evans, and that's his physicality. Uh, not necessarily his blocking, although honestly, I could make a whole video on how good of a blocker he is. I mean, you can make, the, make a strong argument. He's the best blocking wide receiver in the NFL. Uh, but what I like about uh, what he does, and it's, it's almost a little James Harden-like, where you can just sort of see how he can... Uh, get away with certain things that maybe uh, a lot of other guys wouldn't be able to. He sort of knows where the line is and does a great job at not crossing that line most of the time. This is an example where it's a one-on-one -on -one matchup, and that's the route he's running. It's going to kind of fake as though he's going over the middle and then get to the outside. And uh, right when this ball is snapped, you notice that there's tight coverage right away because there has to be. You can't give up anything because Evans is very good at making those contested catches. But the thing about that is that Wonder was that initial, you know, uh, 
closeness is that there was also contact. And so because there's contact, usually the refs will not call a penalty if there's contact at the line, even if it's officially one yard past the line of scrimmage. They very rarely will do that. Uh, and so Evans knows this, and especially in you know these end zone type situations, they're much less likely to do it. And so he's just going to kind of push off a little bit. He runs over, and he's able to make the grab. Again, it's it's hard to really know when you're a referee how much of that was just him making a good move, and how much of that was just him pushing off. So that little push off, uh, again, you could argue it is it against the rules, kind of. You know, is it significant enough? It's up for interpretation, but. You know, more often than not, they're not going to call these, which is why you'll see him do it. And he gets some touchdowns this way and some important third down conversions this way. And also, this was a a total no-brainer decision to make because this was right at the end of the half and it was a third down and goal situation. So even if this backfires, well then, hey, no worries. You know, we have to, we'll run some sort of a draw play and we'll probably kick a field goal from the same, um, you know, same amount of distance and it's not really changing much. So it's a you know good opportunity and a good time to sort of take that risk and see if you can get away with it. Uh, again, you can argue whether or not he should be doing that or shouldn't be doing it, but he does it and it works. And you know it is a part of his game. So I figured I should mention that because it's interesting. You know, not a lot of guys do that, but he says, "Hey, while the rule book is in the offensive player's favor, I'm going to take advantage of that." And I mean, I think it makes sense, but. Uh, what do you guys think about Mike Evans? How good do you think he is? Here's what I want you to know. Rank him. Tell, tell me where you think he is. Is he like a top five receiver? I think he's top five. Uh, if I had to give my personal list right now, I'd probably go DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas, and then I'd probably go Evans at four. Uh, but what do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.